Hi guys. Oh goodness, he's at it again. Despite his humiliation at the hands and wit of Professor Hoodboy, well, when it came to physics, Hamza still thinks he can tackle complex topics, when it is abundantly clear that his brain is more at home thinking about flying mules, making humans from clay and talking ants, and not gravity or other natural forces. Talk about delusion. Now, when a little boy dons a cape and pretends he can fly, it's cute. But when a grown man does the same thing, it's horribly embarrassing and simply pathetic. Let me ignore this pronunciation mistake, but it shows right from the start what he knows about this topic. Nothing. Zilch nada. Science does not concern itself with gods, regardless of which one. And science does not make stuff up using invisible and supernatural beings. And science does not rely on Superman, but old-fashioned good old work, using the brain. I know it's an unfamiliar concept for Hamza, I know, but that's how stuff happens in this world. And science has nothing to do with theists or atheists. How many times do I need to tell him this? It is neutral. Why doesn't he understand this? But do I detect a trace of envy when he says the words Internet warriors? Like atheists own the Internet? <laughs> what a childish brain. Internet, the Internet warriors, the atheists saying, look, we don't need God as an explanation anymore. And why does Hamza presuppose that only atheists were concerned? Why can't a Muslim work there? Does Hamza prohibit any scientific development for Muslims? Does he maintain Muslims are incapable of working there? What about someone like Professor Jamal al-Khalili? Or maybe he's not a Muslim, I don't know. But why does he waffle so much about atheists and how atheists don't need a god anymore? <laughs> because of the Higgs field. Oh, come on. It's been around since the 60s. It, 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 it's what makes science so great. It was a prediction by Professor Peter Higgs. And it has taken until July 2012 to actually demonstrate he was probably right with his scientific prediction. No God, no Superman, just a human who has real knowledge and works with his brain. And just as an aside, nobody but the media has claimed the existence of the Higgs boson or God particle. Only a particle with the properties, characteristics and behavior, a Higgs-like boson was found which requires more verification. So Amza's video is a total overreaction. Uh, but then again, what do I expect? And who is clutching at what intellectual straws? The God particle is a hyperbole. It's just like my riding a bike at the speed of sound. Except that without the Higgs mechanism, the universe and everything with it would not exist. It's that simple. Does Hamza have any clue what the standard model actually consists of? Does he have any idea how bosons differ? Could he explain why, if the Higgs mechanism provides particles with mass through interaction, why are photons, gluons, etc. excluded? Why does Hamza not explain the difference between a boson and a fermion? Why does he not explain how the existence of the Higgs field could have been the cause of the Big Bang? by breaking up equilibrium and symmetry. Why doesn't he explain that the Higgs boson is just a previously unknown boson and only a fraction of the complete picture of the building blocks that our universe is made up of? It looks as though well, he does not understand that humans are trying to understand the universe and what it consists of. The Higgs boson doesn't affirm or deny the existence of God. Scientists are not at all interested in why it exists, just how it exists. This research is getting more detailed and has determined that we know almost nothing, even after 150 years of research. Well, 200,000 years of humans creating gods has not answered anything about how the universe exists, so humans today are doing the work. By establishing the existence of a weak force, which is determined by the Higgs field, which leads to the excitation of a Higgs boson, and also by what mechanism other particles actually have mass, including the Higgs boson itself. Now, in particle physics, 
there are so many different models and possibilities that even being able to confirm or exclude one of them is already a huge step. And being able to confirm one of the, well, or even the most elusive elements in the standard model so far is, in my eyes at least, an immense achievement the human race should be proud of, universe. instead of delivering this no, trivial. The early universe. Hamza obviously does not understand this. He's only worried about the gap of his god being narrowed down even more. And no, the Higgs boson has no theological implications at all, because it does not care about theology or the implications of theology or what theology does to perfectly normal human beings. And, well, Hamza, it does not matter whether it is the early universe or the late universe or just the universe. That is the beauty of the Higgs field. It is out there. The universe was once in a state of non-existence then it came into existence because we know the universe began. If it began, then it was once nothing, then it became something. It doesn't discuss any of that. Who has ever demonstrated or proven that the universe was in a state of non-existence? What is a state which is non-existent? <laughs> How can something non-existent have a state? <laughs> oh, goodness. I swear I lose IQ points every time I listen to that whining voice. No, the universe has never been proven to begin. This is why what he calls this, meaning the research around the Higgs field, does not in any way even attempt to explain or discuss why anything happened when it comes to the creation of the universe. No, not at all. Hamza's this does not refer only to the early universe. All it does is it brings us one step closer to understanding what happened and what did not happen, narrowing down the possibilities. Do all subatomic particles travel at the speed of light? No, how can they? I mean, even a short trip to Wikipedia could have saved him this embarrassment. And does the Higgs field suddenly switch itself on? Where does he get this from? So now the Higgs field is switched on. Now, where does the Higgs boson come into play? Well, the Higgs boson is the particle that makes up the Higgs field. Oh, goodness, no, it is not the Higgs boson which makes up the Higgs field or what is responsible for the Higgs mechanism. He is completely clueless. And no, nobody has empirically justified anything. What are you on about? Let's hear what a real scientist makes of this. First, just like the electron is an excitation in the electron field, the Higgs boson is simply a particle which is an excitation of the everywhere permeating Higgs field. The Higgs field, in turn, plays an integral role in our model for the weak nuclear force. The second reason to include the Higgs in the standard model is some jargony business about the Higgs field giving other particles mass. Why do particles feel the Higgs field differently? But there is one manifestation of the field is the existence of this particle. It occupies space. It contains energy. Its presence eliminates the true vacuum. Most fields in science are generated by some source. An electric field is generated by an electric charge. Take away the source, and the value of the field goes to zero. But the Higgs field is different in this respect. It still has a value, a physical reality. At every point in space, even without a source to generate it. I wonder which atheist talks about this in connection with any god. Does Hamza think his oversimplification and rambling about things he has no knowledge of fools anyone? Why doesn't he stick to facts and the truth for a change? Instead, he just makes stuff up and pretends people think the way he thinks they think, which they don't. <laughs> so what is the conclusion of an experimental physicist? This breakthrough has opened the floodgates for further understanding and discovery and should help physicists in a number of exciting fields such as those of dark matter and dark energy. It's a truly monumental day in history. And that is all. Another step towards understanding. Without prostrating on our knees or folding our hands or reading in some old book full of superstition, demons and ghosts, but rather doing some work and letting those brain cells do something useful. Thank you for your time.